comic book provided by John the Comics, Glendale, Arizona's premier comic book emporium. Hello everyone and welcome to the comic book review section of Chaotic French. This is something I'm going to be doing every couple of weeks to talk about new books that are out. And it seems kind of fitting that this is the uh, day before Comic-Con we're doing our first one. And I actually wanted to talk about the um, books in Flashpoint. So it's kind of easier with these books to just review them all as one kind of entity. So we're just going to go through the books going to give you some quick impressions on what I have on them. So this, because of the amount of books, I'm going to kind of review them a lot quicker than I will be later on. So, first start off with Dead Man. Uh, Dead Man and the Graysons, actually. I like the fact that they are behind enemy lines with the, um, with the war that's going on between Aquaman and Wonder Woman. So I like the fact that they're kind of behind enemy lines. I like the fact with uh, Dick Grayson and Dead Man kind of interacting together. It's, I think, a book that later on is going to work. I think right now, it's not that it's slow, it's just I'm still trying to figure out what is going on and the whole thing with Dr. Fate being with them and that the Amazons want his helmet I, I, I'm kind of going, okay, let's go with it. And that's one of the things with a lot of these books, you kind of have to let go with it because they are creating a new universe. They are using some familiar things, and things are just going to be switched around and switched and changed and whatever, and you just have to go with it. So this one, I'm going to kind of let it go and say, let's see how it goes in the next few issues. So I'm kind of grudgingly saying, let's see what happens. Aquaman kind of like where this is going. I mean, I like this book. Uh, I didn't think that I was going to like it um, just because the, the aspect of the whole war going on with it, but I like it. I like the way it's been laid out. I would recommend this. A lot of war. Um, okay, you can probably tell by my face I'm not too, I'm not too happy with it. I have to say one thing about this book. It's something that happens with a number of books on the list. They kind of systematically kill people. And they systematically kill people violently. And I'm not sure why this is necessary. Are they saying we definitely want to, you know, these characters are dead? But the visceral gore that's in it, just to prove that point, I'm not too happy with it. So I'm giving this one a definite no. Hal Jordan, I don't know where it's going. I, well, let me rephrase that. The book kind of just meandered to me. I know, obviously, from the artwork that Hal Jordan will become Green Lantern at some point, but here, I don't know, maybe they're just trying to show that he's an arrogant bastard and that there may be a heart of gold so that he can become Hal Jordan that people know as Green Lantern. I don't know but I'm not really thrilled with it. Kid Flash. Another one. Kind of get it, what they're trying. It's working in the whole reverse Flash thing, feature thing. I almost think that this is tied in more to the DC game rather than the DC comics because it seems to fit more within the game concept than in the um, actual book, which it sounds craft marketing to me, and I'm not too really happy with craft marketing. So, Project Superman. I can only, uh, and I have to really do a premise on this one. I read it, and it didn't really make me jump for joy until, and this is a strange, until I read Flashpoint, the third issue, where they go after and get Superman. And from what you see in Project Superman, how you see Superman actually being, you kind of go, that actually makes sense. Don't want to really get too much away, but I want to see where Project Superman goes. So I'm giving not really a grudging, oh, I don't know, let me give it, I'm more like, yeah, I do want to see what happens with this. So let's see. Reverse Flash. Reverse Flash. It's actually 
kind of nice because he is the villain of the piece, so you're seeing things from his point of view. I give it more than a grudging yes with it, because now we're seeing his motivation, but it seems like the motivation, I think, is where I'm having some difficulties with. It's like, okay, so you wanted to be the Flash because you saw the Flash in the present, but it was your future, but now you want to change his life so it's only you, but you're dealing with time paradoxes and the speed force, and I'm like, okay, right, all right. Now, I'm going to do something I really shouldn't do, but I'm going to anyway. The uh, Secret Seven, Canterbury Cricket, and Outsider. Canterbury Cricket and Outsider, I just, I just didn't like them. I can't even give you any really rationale for it. Well, Canterbury Cricket just, I just don't get it. The whole British thing and the British character, I don't get it. Outsider, it's supposed to be the outsiders, but not really the outsiders because he's an outsider. And again, you have this thing where they're, they're kind of killing characters indiscriminately in it. And I'm just not digging either one of those books. With The Secret Seven, I know why I don't like it. Because most of these characters are Vertigo characters, and these are characters that I got into comics and studied comics and really said these are like really good, mature books that I want to show people. And they've made the characters, on the one hand, kind of the superheroes that have always been uh, the antithesis of the Vertigo line of books. But then they still want to be the edgy Vertigo books. If you read issue one, and especially I just read issue two, th again, you get the visceral killing stuff going on where you're just saying, why? And for these characters, it just seems wrong for them to be that way. But, you know, I could be wrong. So again, I'm giving it a chance, but I'm not happy with it now. The Canterbury Cricket and the Outsider, I'm really not that happy with them at all. Uh, World of Flashpoint. Interesting with World of Flashpoint is basically the magic characters and what they're doing. And they almost have this sort of secret agency going on between the magic users and this particular universe. It was a mixed bag for me. Uh, the character, the main character herself, I don't re recognize her from the uh, DC universe proper, but as far as giving an idea of what the world is like and how everything is divided up, it works for me. But then they kind of go into this whole, uh, we need to do Watchmen and destroy the world to save the world, and it seems a little far-fetched considering these are magic users, and they're going to use a bomb. To do, to do it. It's like, you're magic users, but you're going to use a bomb. So, for the slight history lesson, like it, because it helps you catch up. Storyline, not liking it. Uh, let's see, who else we've got here? Ah, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, because it's a part of the whole war that's going on, like Aquaman, it worked for me. I, I read it. I got into it. I got pieces together on what was going on with the characters. So I kind of, so I kind of liked it. Let's see, Deathstroke and Citizen Cold and Oven Sewer. We're gonna put all three of those together. Uh -uh. Oven Sewer is the only one I give like some grudging credit to because at least Oven Sewer, uh, we know where it's heading with the whole Green Lantern thing and just. So I'm kind of interested in that, just seeing how it's going to mesh, but Citizen Cole, I felt nothing. Deathstroke, kind of less than nothing, if that makes any sort of sense. Wasn't happy with it. Uh, let's see, the Batman Night of Vengeance. Sort of, what if, and I'll give it away, what if Thomas Wayne became a Dark Knight Avenger? You basically would have a calmer version of the Dark Knight Returns. That's what you got. 
and there is a surprise something of a surprise in the second issue which I was grudgingly loving it on the first issue actually a little bit more than grudgingly loving it by the second issue it's gone the love is gone I'm not going to say what it is when you read it you'll know it uh, let's see there is uh, oh yes Green Lantern Industries I'm trying to remember these Green Lantern Industries and Lois Lane and the Resistance Force. Yeah. Again, two no's, two shakes, not liking it, either one. But again, with both of these, there's just like these killings that happen. You're thrown in, and then stuff happens, and then someone dies, and you're kind of sitting there like, eh? Ah, one, I did forget, I did forget a couple. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of them here. Uh, the, I'm trying to remember, it's the Legion issue. I want to say Legion of Doom. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I don't have it on my list, but I remember reading it. And it's another one of those. It starts off bad. Then there's an interesting kind of middle to it, to where it's basically the Supermax prison that they've talked about in the DC Universe. And you kind of get a cool idea with it. It kind of works. The ending of the first issue, this was a vers visceral death that, again, I was like, ugh, this is kind of gross, but it was neat. If you have to, if you have to bring Plastic Man into something, and that's the only thing, you're going to bring Plastic Man into something, this is a cool way to do it. Gross? But I liked it. <laughs> so with that one, I'm going, I'm, I'm kind of want to see how the second issue goes. The first issue, like I said, I kind of went all over the map with it, but the ending kind of made me go, okay, I kind of, I kind of like this. Now, before I actually review Flashpoint itself, I want to get into the one that surprised me the most, which was Frankenstein and the Creature Commando. I saw this cover and I said, no. No, and no, I don't like it. I just didn't like it from the cover. I read it, and I was surprised. I was pleasantly surprised with it. Um, it's, it's weird. It's, it's almost, the best way I can think of describing it is uh, think of the um, way back going to the Demon miniseries with Edegrin. And thinking, oh wow, this is going to be bad, but then you read it and you go, oh gosh, this is actually good. This is what the feeling I got with the Frankenstein book. It was like, I thought I knew what it was going to be, and I thought the, pre uh, the premise was crazy, but when I read it, I liked it. <laughs> and I liked the way the premise worked. So now, for the big one, Flashpoint. What happens with Flashpoint? Flashpoint... The story itself with Barry Allen trying to figure out what in the world is going on is taunt. It's hard hitting. And I actually like it. And meshed in with a lot of the other books, it, it flushes it out a bit more. It's, it's kind of weird the way it works is that if you read Flashpoint, you get the bits and pieces and they kind of fall in. But when you read the other books, a lot of times they're kind of haphazard, but they do give you information leading on to the main thing. So they're not telling stories as much as they are giving information. The, the few that I mentioned, obviously, they, they kind of stand out on that. The Flashpoint itself is an actually good story. Even if you're not sure what everything's going on, it kind of folds in and you kind of find out as you go along. So those are the um, issues that have at hand. Oh, forgot one more. Kind of in the same vein, um, it's uh, X-Men Schism, number one. And X-Men Schism is doing an interesting thing. It's actually, um, it's tough right now to see who's going to go on what side, uh, with either Scott's side or Wolverine's side. And they have this interesting relationship now, which kind of, if you've been with the X-Men long enough, it makes sense that they would have an interesting relationship like this. So, you know, it's going to take a couple of issues, obviously, for everything to, for the dust to settle and everything like that. And it's another one of these big change books. But it has a story, and following the story with um, 
the way the mutant that comes in actually changes things uh, with uh, getting the Earth to get upset with the mutants makes sense. Uh, the introduction of a certain club, <laughs> we all know who that is, but the certain club, not so sure, but I'm willing to give it an issue or two to see if I'm liking this direction. So far, how it happened it seems a little weak, but we're talking about we're dealing with mutants anyway, so sometimes we are given. So that's it. Uh, in a few weeks, we'll have some more comics to review, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.